We started this business, we started it with the idea that we wanted to create really a frequency medicine device. Albert Einstein said that the future of medicine will be based on frequency. Nikolai Tesla said that if you want to know how the universe works, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, where we just completely separate from the pack of beds out there is we are a true frequency device. So that's number one is this is a frequency device. For example, red light therapy, it's a button on our machine. You can press that button, you got it. But we can also shape the wavelengths that we send. Again, red light therapy targets that one chromophore. From a light wave standpoint, we target three chromophores. So we get more benefits from a light standpoint. But we're able to shape that light with frequency. And shaping that light with frequency is just incredible. That's what you feel. You know, when you did the chamber and you came out, you're kind of smiling. And it's oh, like, sure. you, didn't, you didn't feel the light. You felt the frequency. That's yeah. that's the primary difference that we do. We also do something. We put scalar energy in, into the field. And the scalar codes are designed to imprint the quantum field with an information signature. So it's like, basically, we're putting a blueprint into the quantum field so that the body can entrain to that blueprint. That blueprint might be for a healthy liver in one protocol. With the intention then is we're setting up the underlying bioenergetics so that the body can then entrain to what a healthy liver looks like. So that's kind of the second thing on our ATP RFQ. When we start looking at our new device, the Elysium device, man, it's a different animal altogether. I mean, we, we literally... The ATP RFQ pulses to 400,000 hertz. The Elysium or the, uh, the ATP, AT, RFQ? ATP. Oh, ATP wow. RFQ? Yeah. So resonant frequency quantum, that's what RFQ stands for, pulses to 400,000 hertz. The Elysium device will pulse to 2 million hertz. So in research, what they found is that, for example, to break up pathogens in the body, we're not treating cancer, but I'm going to quote cancer studies. So what they found is that cancer cells have resonant frequencies between 100,000 and 300,000 hertz. All right. That's why we pulse the ATP system to 400,000 hertz. But they also use a harmonic, which is a multiple of that. So by being able to do 2 million hertz means we built into this device a capability to do just about anything that is potentially possible from a medical standpoint. Will this be available from a retail standpoint? Probably not anywhere anytime soon, but we built the capabilities into this device to do just about anything. It's really cool. Now that's just the ATP RFQ. So with that, I mean, sometimes that might kind of freak people out and think, Hey, you know what? More isn't always better. Can you explain how your beds work? Does it put somebody at risk if they stay in too long? Yeah. So from a dosing standpoint, our systems are dose optimized based on we had Dr. Michael Hamlin, leading researcher in the world. He's on retainer with us in 2018 when we built our ATP system. We worked with him to get dosing right because that's number one. And we're doing six different wavelengths. We're right on those six different wavelengths. We're right on total cumulative energy. And we write our protocols so that they are dose optimized. So if I run a 20-minute protocol because I'm running so many frequencies in that protocol, I'm dose optimized in that, that protocol. If I run a 12 minute protocol, we're dose optimized at 12 minutes. That's the first part of it. From a dosing standpoint, you can absolutely overdose. Now it's not necessarily gonna hurt you to overdose in a light bed. We suggest you do two sessions a week, take a day off in between each session. And what we find is there's a lot of red, red light bed companies out there and they're great. And people are using those every day. With our system, we don't necessarily recommend that. Because what will happen is it'll circulate the toxins throughout the body. For some people who are really toxic, maybe you've got Lyme disease, maybe you've got a lot of antibiotics in your system. The next day, you could just have a hard time getting out of bed. It's called a Herzheimer reaction. Twice a week, maybe three times a week is going to be optimal dose in our system. But going back to what you just said, though, somebody maybe does go in a bit too much or so the next day they get flu-like symptoms. Is it a risk? I mean, how bad or, or is it going to help them long term? Yeah, that's a great point. Generally speaking, if you're cleaning up your body, it's going to help you long term. If you're detoxifying, what we're saying is we don't want to detoxify too fast. 